everybody, it's Christy back with another video and today we're going to talk about art books. So I have a ton of art books. Uh, that shouldn't surprise anybody. Just if you've been around the channel, you know, I love a good book. I'm a sucker for a nice art book that could do a lot of things. I have art books whose idea is just to give you tutorials. I have art books that are reference guides. I have art books that you actually are supposed to do art inside of the book. So I have broken this down and I have nine books in front of me. Um, this is not all the books I have and it's not all the books I love. I do have other books I love. This is just right now the books that are either inspiring me or I'm hoping to get into a little bit more here in 2023. So I'm going to divide this into three categories. If you guys have ever been around the Jazza channel, shout out to Jazza, he's the best. Um, one of the things Jazza says a lot is to dabble before you dive. So I've divided this into three categories. There is the inspire category, the dabble category, and the dive category. So the inspire category will be reference guides that I pull out when I'm looking for inspiration for a specific color or reference or something like that. The dabble category is going to be books I can actually play in um, that are going to teach me something. And the dive category is when I am just having art block, full on tutorial. I just want to do something that somebody else thought of so that I can really, really hone in and learn and, you know, get, make my techniques better. Quick reminder, I'm an art hobbyist. This is all for fun for me. Um, there's plenty of other resources out there. This isn't the end all be all. This is just what I am using right now. I have other reference guides as well. I have other things in my possession that I'm not going to talk about today. Um, so if I don't mention one of your favorites, please drop it in the comments below because chances are either I have it and already like it and just it's not, you know, in my radar right now or it's something that I don't know about and I want. So um, let's get started. I'm going to head to top down view so that I can actually pull the books out and you guys can look at them. So let's go. All right, so let's start with the Inspire category. So we want to look at three different reference guides here that I think are really great just to pull out when you are feeling like you don't know what you're going to do and you're just looking for some inspiration. You're not necessarily looking to do a full-on tutorial of any kind, but just some inspiration. So this is one I got for Christmas called Terry Harrison's Pocket Book for Watercolor Artists. And it is very different from my style but it's small and I can keep it in my bag. And what I love about it is that in some of these sections here, you are, let me find what I'm talking about. Um, he has just these beautiful pictures that are amazing inspiration. And then he goes through just different techniques, talking about mixing, ways to do washes, wet on dry. But like here, here's a masking technique. I don't normally do that, but this would be a great thing to just pull out and be like, okay, let's give it a try. Here's some different ways you can use masking. And then even more ways to use masking. Lifting out. So this is just a really nice book to kind of pull out. It wasn't expensive. It's nice and thin, um, but it's got a hundred essential tips to improve your painting. So if you're just looking for it today, I want to focus on trying something new. I think this book is a great inspiration and reference guide for watercolor artists. I have another one of these, but I really, really like his explanations in here a lot. Maybe you're looking for specific, like I draw a lot of watercolor florals and I know Emma Lefebvre uses this. She is the one I, this is the reason I bought it. Uh, but this is absolutely excellent. If you wanna learn how to paint flowers, I would say my flower game was up so much by owning this book because this book just gives you so many references that you can go ahead and use to learn the ways that flowers look. And there's the thing I love about this is that it's just on white paper. So you're only looking at the flowers. You're not worried about what's around them, which sometimes is helpful. Sometimes I think all of that extra noise in an actual picture that I might take myself makes it harder for me to focus on the flowers themselves. And then these all have really nice shading as well on the flowers. So you can focus on shading the flowers themselves. But this book, I don't, again, I don't think it was terribly expensive. I don't remember. It might have been given to me as a gift because um, it was on a wish list I had. But I go to this again and again when I'm like, I just want to paint some different types of flowers. 
and I want to do it in my style, this is the book that I grabbed. Another book that I grab when I'm looking for colors is Perfect Palette. So the Perfect Palette book is really great for if you are looking for a specific color palette. So, I mean, look at all of these different options that you have here if you're looking for like a neutral color palette that is tagged by different like moods and feelings like mysterious, romantic, solitude, fresh, magical, dreamy, curiosity. So it's just a really good way to look at color palettes. Right now, a lot of people are out there using Sarah Renee Clark's Color Cube, and I'm super jealous because it looks amazing, but I'm on a no spend this year, so I'm not going to buy it. Um, so in order to like get my fix with color in the meantime, I've been using this book, but I would say if you had the choice between the two, Sarah Renee Clark's Color Cube is another excellent resource that's similar to this. So either one would be a great way to inspire yourself with color um, without... Uh, with, with having something that's actually like physical and tactile, because I do think there's something to be said about having an actual physical book in your hands that you can flip through, that you can look at, that you're not looking at on a screen. I am a big believer of that. I have so many books in my house. So these are my things that I look to, or I'm using to look for inspiration at the moment. Let's talk about some books that I'll use for dabbling. All right, so I've got three books up next that are dabble books. One of them is one that's just old, but I'm very excited to use it, and that is this Mariah Elizabeth Create This Book. Um, I never got one years ago, and so I bought the first one. I know there's a second one, but I have never done it. So I thought this would be fun, and this is something I think would be fun to do with my daughter. So I think it would be really fun for the two of us to go through and do this together at the same time or like I could do it on a page and she could do it in the book. So I was thinking this would be a really fun thing for her and I to play with together. And she has expressed to me that she misses being on the YouTube channel. It's hard when she's in school and in so many activities, but let me know in the comments below if you want the two of us to do this together. And along those same lines, I bought this book to do with her as well. And it is specifically called Draw With Mom. Um, a two-person doodle book, and it's meant to be done with a child. They have one called Draw With Dad, too, um, so it is gender-friendly on their website like that. But, um, yeah, I just really thought that it would be fun to do some of these with her as channel prompts, so I'm excited for us to dive into this together, to dabble. This is the dabble section, Christy. Come on! <laughs> but yeah, I just thought it would be fun for us to do. Uh, let me know if that's something that you think would be fun for you to see sooner than later. And this is a book by the company Book for Book. They were, I don't know, it came up on, I think, either Instagram or YouTube as a recommendation for me, which isn't surprising because I talk about doing uh, art with my daughter a lot. Actually, I think it's Bushel and Peck Books is the company. But I just think that it's really cool that they made something like this. And I look forward to playing with it with her. The last dabble I have, hopefully for this summer, I said it was going to be for last summer and then I didn't open it and not a look last summer. But this is called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And I have pulled it out again. I have the workbook and I really want to work on this. Lindsay Wyrick, the frugal crafter, recommended this to people who didn't learn how to draw when they were younger. And I am not terribly great at drawing things, but I am trying to get better and I'm kind of self-teaching and it's hard. <laughs> so this is a book that I thought would be really good for me to um, enhance my abilities in the drawing section because I think for me, that's probably the next step to really boost my art um, to the next level is to really actually be a little bit better at drawing, especially drawing things like people and pets and like that and even architecture. I'd like to be able to do that to paint landscapes that I feel look more realistic. So I'm really excited to dive into this and for it to have a workbook. So this is gonna be a fun thing for me to dabble with. If you want to have me catalog any of my journey with this on the channel, again, let me know. I would love to know what you think. All right, and then I'm gonna talk about three books that I just use when I really want to just paint.
So these next three books are very watercolor um, centered and they very much for me are the books that I am currently pulling out when I feel like I don't know what to paint and I just want to paint something. Um, the first one, it shouldn't be a surprise, is Emma Lefebvre's Watercolor Lessons. Um, there are 20 tutorials in here. I've worked my way through a couple of them, but you can see just kind of looking at the back here, she talks about a bouquet. And then more of her tutorials are towards the back here. There's a project on different kinds of trees. I've definitely done this when I've wanted to do get out of my funk with drawing the same trees all the time and to draw something a little bit different. Um, and then there's food back here. Um, there's some animals back here. So this is just a great book for me when I want to pull something out and just try something without having to come up with it myself. And sometimes as a watercolor artist, that is my goal. It is just, I got to paint. I want to paint. I want to move my hands with a brush. And how do I do that fastest? And this is one of the books that allows me to do that. The other two books I'm going to show you are by the same author because she is just the best. I love Colby Bloom. I cannot say enough nice things about Colby Bloom. So I have Colby's watercolor landscapes and her watercolor seascapes here. Um, I actually have a thing in here because this I saw the other day and was like, got to paint that like right now. So this is one that I'm going to do because I wanted to do it. I just saw it and was like, oh, got to paint that. I just like love that water and I want it. So um, yeah, Colby's books to me are so very approachable. And um, like she says, 30 eye-catching scenes anyone can master. Colby very much is, if you go on her Instagram, if you go on her YouTube, she is all about learning in the mess and being in the mess and just painting to paint and realizing it's not going to be perfect and really that anybody can do it. Like she's so very um, relatable and I love watching her paint and talk about her art journey. She's a big inspiration to me and I think that I take a lot of inspiration from her style for my own landscape specifically. So like I love looking at what she does and I really love both of these books. And I find myself when I really just have a bad day and just want to paint something and I don't want to think about it, just flipping through here and finding something. And sometimes I don't paint exactly what she's got. Like, for example, this frozen lake, like I might pull this out and paint it, but paint it just a little bit differently. Do it in my style. Only add this piece and not the big tree. You know, I'm just saying things that I could do here. But um I just love her books and they give me so much peace and inspiration. And I know that Colby would be glad to hear that about her books in general. So these are my last two recommendations for books that I love diving into to paint with. So um, they're both on Amazon and affordable. Um, everything in here, I don't think I showed you anything that was more than about 30 US dollar. And obviously you don't have to buy all of those, but that just gives you a little bit of some ideas. So I hope that you enjoyed going through that little journey of my art books that I'm really into right now. Uh, it's certainly not my whole collection. I have a lot more. And um, if you didn't see your favorite one, don't worry, I might already have it. Or if I don't already have it, you should leave it in a comment below so that I can learn about it. And that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully this inspires you to get out one of your art books and make something creative today with yourself or with you and a child or any way you want. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.